Join me behind the lens to photograph short-eared owls. I will show you my camera settings and techniques to capturing stunning images like these. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I'm a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. Over the next few weeks, I will be sharing content from my exciting trips to the Teton Mountains, Yellowstone National Park, East Coast of Canada, and everywhere in between. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Uh, morning everyone. I'm all packed up and we're heading over to Vancouver. I'm meeting a couple of other photographers. Woke up at 5.15 this morning and I got a text saying, hey, you wanna come photograph some short-eared owls? So that's where I am and they should be arriving here fairly soon. So I think I'm going with two other photographers uh, that are from Vancouver Island here but I'm excited to get out and hopefully see some, some owls today. Welcome to the channel. I am back over Vancouver area and uh, I'm out looking for short-eared owls. We found one. So far it's just been the one that I've spotted but we just got here and I'm actually photographing with two other guys. We took the ferry over and kind of split costs um, which is which is great. So I'm here with Nick and I'm also here with Brian and uh, I'll put their handles and stuff down below so you guys can check them out on social media and stuff but it's nice. It is a stunning day the sun is out there was fog when we first were coming in and now it's just perfect soft lighting. I was here a year ago, almost to this day, and uh, I was kind of in this area photographing, I think six or seven short-eared owls, and it was just stunning. Now, it was just after a king tide, and there was mice that, and moles kind of dead, and there was a lot of food, 
And off on the horizon, there was northern harrier hawks everywhere, and then again, the short-eared owls. So there's a lot of food to, to be eaten. And there was also a blue heron, a couple of blue heron just in this area, not even along the water, because uh, there was just so much food to, to eat. I'm gonna set up my camera. I've got uh, my Nikon Z9 with the new firmware update and it's got a bird setting, so I'm gonna to switch to that. Uh, I'm gonna shoot with um, auto ISO, so manual mode with auto ISO, so I can change my shutter speed to match kind of the speed and flow of the owl. And then my aperture will probably be around F4, shooting wide open. But if we are getting all of this sunlight, um, I might stop it down, because depending on how close the owl gets, uh, the, the depth of field can be so shallow, um, so I'll ramp that up. And the great thing is, is I can make any adjustments to capture the, the owl and freeze it in frame. So that's my shutter. And I can make an adjustment on my aperture to get more depth of field. And I don't have to worry about the exposure being nicely balanced because my auto ISO will go ahead and fill in the gaps. And sometimes I find the Nikon might shoot things a little bit darker, so I might do exposure compensation and brighten it up a little bit so that it still works auto, but a little bit brighter um, so I get all the details that I want in, in the frame. So I'm excited about testing out the new firmware update. Heard nothing but good things. And uh, I do have a teleconverter, uh, 1.4 teleconverter. Um, I'll put a little link here uh, uh, indicating that all of my gear, you guys can check it out. It's on my website, but I've got links down below. So, so far all the photos and the video are from just one day out in the field and I have more, uh, but I forgot to kind of explain a little bit more of my settings. So I'm out here, this is a different day, um, but I wanted to dive into uh, what my camera settings are for capturing on video the short-eared owls as well as uh, my camera settings for taking the photos. So I got some questions on the last short-eared owl video that I did, uh, which I posted I think about a year ago. And uh, some of the questions were, were what video settings uh, do you do? Firmware uh, update, uh, focus mode, autofocus, uh, do I use peak setting, manual focus, that sort of thing. Uh, and then uh, AF speeds or AF tracking speeds. Um, same thing with stills. So you can program the automatic focus to react really fast or nice and slow to get it a little bit more buttery in between 
uh, focusing, say, background and foreground, that sort of thing. So let's dive in uh, to a few of those settings. So the shutter is around 1 2,000th. I think I shot some at 1600 and it was a little too slow for my liking. Uh, so I boosted that up. And then depending on how close or how far away the short eared owls were, I was shooting at say 5, 6 or 5. Some of them I dropped down to F4. And then my auto ISO, I, there we go, auto ISO. So as I scroll my shutter, guess what? The nothing really changes. Same with my aperture. The only thing that changed is my um, auto ISO, kind of just filled in that missing gap. Now, if things are still overexposed by a little bit, I can go into my um, exposure compensation. And as you can see, I'm going up two stops. And even when I change my shutter or my aperture, it'll stay two stops brighter. And then if I go down, say down two stops, well then again, it doesn't really matter my shutter, my aperture. So I can override sort of the auto setting to be auto, automatic bright or automatic dark, depending on my settings. Does that kind of make sense? So you might have to fine tune it and that's where the exposure compensation comes in. Now, my auto settings, if we go into my uh, focus here and we go down to focus stacking with lock on, someone had a question about that and I just keep mine at three. I haven't tried the erratic, like you can go down to steady and erratic and I feel like erratic might have been smart maybe for the short-eared owls, especially where they're fighting and swinging up in the air clawing at one another. Um, I just have it set to steady. Um, a few other ones, focus points used, I use all points. Uh, then there's a couple of other questions down into my video settings. So all the way down to G6 here, my AF speed. I just kept this at zero, kind of in the middle. Uh, I didn't want to go too fast because it might be a bit too jerky. Maybe I should slow it down a little bit. So maybe in hindsight, I would want to be down to like say negative two. But honestly, I, I just kept it at zero. And it's been working for me. AF tracking sensitivity. Now this one I made a little bit higher. Uh, I think it's normal setting is like four. Could be wrong. Maybe it was set to three and I never touched it, but that's what that setting is there. Now if we go back into the main screen here, if the owl is all over the place and I can't quite track it and I'm focusing on grass in the foreground or the background, I sometimes will go on my lens and switch it to autofocus and I have it set so that my peak focusing is a highlighted blue. So see the blue there and I can track it and I can keep that blue on the short-eared owl and I'm using my thumb here as I'm moving along, filming or photographing the short-eared owl. And I'm keeping that blue highlight on the, on the owl as it's soaring and flapping and flying. On the Nikon camera here, there's a, it kind of looks like um, a burst mode icon. So I hold that down and with my roll dial here on the front, I can go right over to a continuous 20 frames per second. Now, if I see a bird that's about to take off and I don't know when that's gonna be, and they're really, really fast reaction, so if it did take off like a hummingbird or anything really, I might have missed the action. So that's when I might wanna do pre-burst mode on my Nikon Z9. And I did that out there for, I think it was a uh, flicker, Northern flicker. And I have a whole other video about um, using this technique with hummingbirds coming to a, a flower and flying away from a flower. Because you can see the action, and of course your reaction is so slow, but it's okay because uh, you've already pre-buffered that, that moment in time. Now if an owl is sitting in the tall grass, I have one of my function buttons on my Z9 program so that when I press it, It'll zoom in 100% and I can fine tune it just in case 
or I can even switch on to manual focus mode, which will put on those blue highlights and I can focus at a hundred times by doing a, a sort of um, digital zoom. So I'm just zooming in really close on my scene, as you can see there. So I programmed one of my buttons to do that and I, f I find that quite helpful to picking out my subject and making sure that I'm that I'm like 100% nice and tuned, 100% uh, nice and sharp on my subject. Another thing that I do is uh, my horizon. I have one of my function buttons um, where I can click it and my horizon level will, will come up. And I find that quite, quite handy. Then there's another button that brings my focus from an area focus to a 3D focus. That's one of the other function buttons. See how it does 3D? So it's bouncing my focus line, trying to grab onto a subject. Then over here on the left side of my camera in the front here, I have another function button so that when I push that down, you can see up in the top of my screen here, this will change my area of focus from continuous to single point to uh, you know manual or focus um, tracking and it'll change my area focus from 3D to to wide or you name it see up at the top here so now I got area here's spot so with a simple button selected on the left hand side programmed I can move this around from there's manual focus right there AFC AFS so it's, it's just really nice and handy to have multiple areas to use at your advantage on the fly when you're in the field. Now you have to take a lot of time using these so that it's kind of second nature for your brain to just, oh yeah, I want single point focus all of a sudden, or I want a manual focus. You know, you push this, hold this button down, you do a switch here, now I'm on manual focus and I can move things forward and backwards, bada boom. Okay, birds flying now, back to continuous, that sort of thing. So hopefully I didn't overwhelm you with some of the amount of, of information here. Uh, hopefully this kind of helps. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Uh, and uh, I've also answered other questions in that other video which I'll put the link down in the description as well if you want to watch that other short-eared owl video uh, after this one, you should check it out. All right, back to me out in the field taking photographs of short-eared owls. been so much action here I'll try and uh, I've got a strong sturdy tripod um, it's from FLM it's carbon fiber um, it's a bit of a pig getting out here but once you have your gear set up um, then you're then you're good on the top here I've got a bridging technology Manfrotto video head and then I've got my camera and lens. Now I went with the video head instead of a like a gimbal. Um, the gimbal's great for bird photography, for moving around. Uh, but I find with video, uh, you can't really control any of the drag and moving around. And since I'm capturing video and photos, I like the video head. And then another thing that's really nice, instead of a gimbal that has kind of the, the arm that comes up, um, it doesn't really get in your way uh, as much. So that's good. Um, this is quite nice and you can lock it and unlock it and then I balance the lens 
kind of here on the top. And then there's dials on the side and on the bottom to dampen and cause some drag for both the tilt and for the swivel. So video head's great. I do have a 1.4 teleconverter that I can put onto my 500, get that extra reach. Uh, but I'm just kind of feeling out the area, seeing where the owls, how far away they are, what composition I want. Uh, over this way, you got some big deciduous trees and it's kind of cool seeing that in the background and there's some fog and haze and that'll kind of show some depth so the trees in the background will be a little bit more hazier and then the, the owl that's closer will kind of pop and stand out, get some more detail. There's all of these bushes that have um, kind of these puffs, white puffs. And during the low-lying uh, soaring of the owl is, uh, is really cool if you can get these kind of white puffs and it matches their their camouflage, their feathers, the pattern. There's a few times where the owl landed and it blends right in, it looks really cool. So it's neat to get some of those camouflage shots. How high do you set your tripod? Do you want to get really low? And since there's all these grasslands and that changes a bit in elevation, shooting at like almost eye level where it can stand and be quite comfortable, uh, seems to work out with some of the, the bushes where the owls fly. Obviously there's times where you would like to get down lower and get some shots, uh, but you know, it's a, a bit of a roll of the dice when you have everything set up on a tripod. I've been really enjoying the new firmware. It's, uh, it's sticking onto the birds way more. I'm getting twice as much. Uh, well, actually, I don't know yet until I can see them up on the computer. I did a quick little peek, but what I'm seeing through the lens, um, it seems to be grabbing onto the, uh, the short-eared owls really well, even when they're fighting up in the air. Um, it's not perfect, uh, like nothing is, um, I think when they're way off in the background, it can hunt a little bit and can grab the, you know, way off in the background there instead of the owl. And then, of course, when the owl's really going through the bushes, um, it does an incredible job of sticking on there if it sees movement. Um, but there has been a few times where I've, where I've lost a little bit of the focus um, onto some of the bushes before in the foreground. but. Um, like I said, I think the owl almost has to be buried or 75% buried in the, the tall grass to lose that focus. Now when everything is slowed way down and the photos are being presented, it seems like it would be an easy feat to frame things up and capture them in a beautiful composure and moment in time but I'm gonna speed things up and show you a little bit more of the chaos that you see when out there photographing these beautiful wild and fast creatures
Now it seems like a bit of a theme of mine, but I need to know whether or not you like the color here or the black and white for this photo. Let me know which one you like down in the comments. And I also photographed this blue heron as it flew by. I wanted to include that. And I took some macro shots and this one I kind of liked the little puffs there and the sunlight hitting it. So I wanted to show that. There's always something to shoot. So if you like this content, please give me that thumbs up. It really helps with the channel. And if you aren't subscribed, maybe think about subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next episode. Ciao.